Allison, thank you for joining me today. How are you? I am super. Thanks for asking. I'm super excited to be here and to chat with you. And uh, just to dive into this, I'm, I'm just really excited to be on the podcast. You guys have had a lot of great guests, and I'm just honored to be a part of this and what you're doing and uh, excited to kind of get started with it. Oh, well, thank you. I really appreciate that. Yeah. Well, to dive in, you were brought on my radar by someone else in the OCR world, and I can't totally remember who, but either way, um, just kind of, I loved the conversation we had initially as far as learning about your history and everything. Um, So before we dive into all of that, I would just love for you to introduce yourself um, to the listeners. So who are you? Man, yeah, I've been kicking around in OCR for some time now. (laughs) I'm not surprised that some random OCR athlete had mentioned my name. I have been around. So I started in like, man, 2011, I think was the first Tough Mudder that I did. Um, You know, like anybody, I went out and did that like Warrior Dash, the Gateway OCR, and uh, just totally fell in love with it. I'd been doing road running and trail running and some ultra marathon and triathlon and all that stuff. And I was just like, man, this is great. I'm so glad that this exists. And I just want to do every single race that there is. Um, So I kind of dove in pretty quick. And then I did, of course, like the Tough Mudder the first year. It went to Whistler, BC, Canada in 2011, I think as well. Um, And then, you know, Spartan Race started coming. And that was cool because Canada was kind of one of the first franchises for Spartan. And it was like way back when they had like, walls that you weren't sure weren't going to collapse as you crawled over them and burpees weren't even a penalty it's just like you'd run to the top of the hill and then they'd have some volunteer be like do some burpees and then you do like really bad burpees that (laughs) would not qualify as a burpee these days um at all but uh, so that's where I started and it's kind of funny it's such a new sport to think like oh I'm like one of the old guards you know I've been around since the sport started since it's new but it's come a long way so it's been cool to be part of the ride there so you know, I got really quickly into like I did sprints and supers and beasts and ultra beasts and um, got really quickly into the endurance stuff because, you know, my background was like ultra marathon running and Ironman triathlon. So I really like the like long adventure days out there. So I quickly kind of took to like Tough Mudder and their endurance series. I did um, the toughest series. I did World Toughest Mudder a bunch of times and uh, just, you know, loved every minute of it. I'd still do like short stuff and long stuff and just kind of anything that came my way just because uh, I loved it so much. I don't do very much anymore. Um, you know, I'm more into the coaching side for sure now. Uh, we just kind of have other projects on the go, but most like obstacle races here at our firm and my husband sets them up for school. So we still, you know, like we have a rig and walls and all that stuff right in the backyard. So still a big part of my life and obviously part of my perfect. Um, but uh, definitely uh, nowadays, especially, it's just hard to get around and, and do those races. So looking forward to that kicking back up a little bit in Canada, but uh, it's just great to just continue to be a part of this like amazing sport that we all know and love and that just kind of keeps changing and getting better, eh? Awesome. Awesome. Um, are you, I'm curious, are you able, what's the story? I know it constantly changes. What's the story of you being able to leave Canada to do any races in the States? You know, it does constantly change. And I'm just like, oh, um, but, uh, you know, it's one of those things, I think November is when they first opened up the border. There was some, like you could get across, but then people would get stuck continuously, um so right now i believe that it is open but it's very hard to travel because airlines are short staffed and then there's all this testing protocol so it's just like oh man i'm just not unless i absolutely have to go somewhere am i going there so um it's just a really big thing and you know we have a bunch of animals here on the farm and two young ones and stuff like that so um you know maybe if i was young and single and didn't have any animals and all that stuff uh I might be a little bit more inclined to travel, but it just comes with such a big risk with all of those uncertainties that uh, I have not done any traveling. And then, of course, because I'm from British Columbia, um, you know, we had 120 degree Fahrenheit days on days and no rain and tons of fires. And the closest city here actually burnt down right to the crisp, um, like right down to the floor in the summer. It's awful with the heat dome. And then we had these floods that wiped out like just huge swaths of the nearby cities and took out our road system and all that stuff. And then we had, you know, like four feet of snow drop just, and we're not in a, you know, people are like, you're from Canada, don't you get snow, but not 
lots of snow for sure where we're from on the west coast here it's it's um pretty uh unique how much snow we just got and then um that's all melting and we're going to have another atmospheric river so tons more rain and avalanches and mudslides so you know even if it wasn't with the covid just with the amount of um Un uncertain natural <laughs> disasters any kind of travel becomes pretty out of the question at this point so definitely sounds like it you know what? all this ocr training i swear to goodness it is paying off like i'm shoveling like big wet heavy snow drifts off roofs and stuff and i'm like man if i didn't do ocr i couldn't climb up onto this roof and spend <laughs> you know four hours pushing snow and still be okay with life you know and just like <laughs> it just teaches you to have like my friend came over the other day and he does uh, obstacle course racing as well and you know we're just joking around and like appreciating the the workout um the strong workout of, of pushing snow off roofs and stuff so it's just like it kind of just changes your perspective even just to these like obstacles that you run into in everyday life it's pretty profound right that you know it just changes the way that you think and that you approach life and just what you're capable of doing and, and that's that's pretty amazing right that the sport has given me so much so yeah that's awesome and i think it's a great way to look at it too because like yes it's a sport we compete but um there's just so much carryover to function in life that it's it's pretty awesome to see that oh my gosh yeah like for a runner to climb up on a roof that's you know and like push snow all day they're gonna get sore in all kinds of ways but we're carrying stuff we're climbing on stuff you know like we have the cardiovascular fitness like it's just like it's so cool because it's so functional and it just has all of the components to being like a capable human being right woven into the training um and so you know it's, it's just kind of one of those things that if you have a background in a certain sport you know soccer or whatever you're going to be good at like sprinting and kicking a ball and stuff like that but if you're good at ocr it's like anything that confronts you in life you're going to have some ability to manage or even just like adventures you want to go out and do any kind of sport or any kind of adventure in the mountains or the woods or whatever you're going to be better able to like manage yourself out there and, and better able to just have a good time because you're just so functional like we may not be good like great at any one thing but we're pretty darn good at most things right just from being exposed to so much and training through so much so i just think that's like the coolest part of it yeah that's awesome yeah. well let's back up a little bit because you definitely went through a period in your life when you were not this functional and not climbing on roofs to shovel snow off of them um <laughs> Yeah, because you were in a pretty traumatic accident. So I want to back up to that and just kind of, you know, talk about that, not necessarily the details of the accident, but more of the recovery process, just because from where you were and kind of the everything you went through through that process is pretty phenomenal to see then where you are today. So I would love for you to share some of that story with us. All right, done. Um, so yeah, just the long story short. So it's hard to make a long story short when you're as wordy as I am. But um, I was riding my bicycle training for a triathlon. So I was riding like a, a triathlon bike, a road bike down the highway. And I got rear ended by somebody who was speeding on the highway. So going out over like 100 kilometers, 60 miles an hour kind of thing. He was looking down at his radio dial and he rear ended me. Um, thankfully, I was on a titanium bike. Um, you know, I didn't lose my life as I probably would have if I was riding like a carbon frame or something, but uh, I ended up breaking my back and uh, being put in a full body cast, like a clamshell for, you know, about half a year and then breaking my pelvis. I had kind of a dancer's avulsion fracture. So it's basically where my leg just kind of popped off of my uh, pelvis. I was trying to slow myself down when I was bum sliding in the ditch at a million miles an hour. <laughs> I just went pop out to the side. Um, and then I broke my arm. I had a compound fracture. So the bones came out. And the next guy that came on the highway actually like held my bones into my arm. I'm like, oh my God, I, there's no way I'd be able to do that. What a, what a hero that guy was. Um, and then obviously messed up my shoulder a bunch with soft tissue and, and neck and stuff like that. So, um, you know, some, some definite bone injury happening there, lots of soft tissue stuff and, uh, just a total, upheaval of what I had known as life up to that point. You know, I was young and doing triathlon and, you know, just feeling really great about my fitness and, and where I was and how capable I was in life. And then all of a sudden one day you're like, I can't even roll myself over in bed. You know, like I had to have a baby monitor. And uh, thankfully my mom, who's amazing, he, she went and did all these courses 
basically where you would learn how to take care of somebody who was not able to take care of themselves. So, you know, she had her house fitted because I couldn't like step into the bathtub, right? So they put me in this little like bathtub elevator, <laughs> like wind it up and they push me over to the side of the tub and then wind it down to get me into the, the bathtub and, and just all these things, like these little things that you don't even realize. And so she went and took a course and then got her whole house like retrofitted and took care of me but if I needed to say roll over in the middle of the night I'd have to yell into the baby monitor and she'd have to come and flip me over I couldn't turn myself and so it's like things like that that you don't even like take into account when you're like a super able-bodied person how uncomfortable that is when you're like oh my god all the blood is rolling right to one side of my body and I cannot even do anything about it I'm just so like fragile as a human being but um I was so well supported and you know my mom really was amazing and really kept um the optimism going for me and really kept me interested in other things that's when I went and did my fitness certification and nutrition certification and all that stuff and kind of deep you know kind of jumped into the world of helping other people you know when you're in that kind of situation you almost feel so helpless that it's it's was really really insightful of her and just amazing of her to find that motivation for me to keep going was in helping other people so you know that worked out really well just in terms of keeping me positive and stuff and then just embracing all the little challenges like you know as a endurance athlete I mean we love challenge don't we and we love overcoming it and now all of a sudden my life was so full of challenges every little thing um I had a cast from my very middle, the very end of my middle finger all the way up to my shoulder, it had to be like specially made because I had busted through my radial nerve and I had no feeling at all in that arm. And um, yeah, so I had that on the one side and then I had the broken hip on the other side. So I had a crutch on that side and then I had the cast and the full body cast for my torso. And I mean, I was pretty immobile and, and it was pretty tough because one hand's on a crutch, one hand is <laughs> totally dead from nerve damage. So um, trying to like figure out how to do things creatively um, and just kind of overcome the, the little daily challenges that just mount up so quickly when you just, um, you know, you're stuck in this new body that that has um, just a constant barrage of difficulties. Uh, it was a really eye-opening experience and one that, you know, I, I definitely wouldn't wish upon <laughs> anybody, but um, it was one that I would never trade. What was, so going from there, like, what was that process like? Cause obviously you were very much bedridden for the most part. Um, and then eventually you got yourself back to being able to do OCR. Um, and I mean, this was obviously before your OCR time too. So what was that process like the, the rehab process and like, just trying to get back to function again, let alone running again, um, throughout that. Yeah. Um, so before that I was really into triathlon and I had always kind of imagined myself going back into triathlon um I obviously came with some fear <laughs> hesitancy on the bike um so it was it was really tough like I could ride a trainer indoors obviously fine but you'd get me out on the road and I'd just be like a total basket case if somebody came too close or um you know I heard a car coming off beside me I'd just throw myself <laughs> ditch um you know it, it was very hard to get back on the bike and be comfortable training um so that you know kind of shut down the the cycling portion for me and then with swimming I had such bad nerve damage I was trying to you know read like how people have made different swimming braces and stuff and I just couldn't rig up anything like um, so basically when I hit the water, my hand would just be like a dead weight. So no matter what I kind of rigged up, it would stop. And like, I'd push myself back into the water as soon as that arm went in. So it was really frustrating. And at that point in my life, they weren't totally sure that that arm would ever regain feeling, um, or movement. So it's kind of one of those things where the swimming and the biking wasn't working. And I did really love running. And that was always my love. Uh, even when it came to triathlon is I was always looking forward to getting off the bike and getting to go for a run. So I was like, you know what, let's just focus in on the running because that's really the piece that's working best for me now. So I really focused in on that. But then at the same time, obviously the rehabilitation side of things was quite um, significant, right? It was, it was like a, probably at least a part-time job. So I was going to like Pilates and yoga and all that like typical rehabilitation stuff. 
And then I started doing more strength work in the gym. And I found that to be like really, really immensely helpful. I know um, the back surgeons and stuff really cautioned against lifting anything more than 10 pounds and, you know, the impact of running, they were very concerned with, but I felt better if I was doing heavy, heavy deadlifts and, and, you know, heavy squats and stuff, my back just felt better. It felt stronger. Um, and so I just kind of continued down that path and started doing more in the gym for sure. I started going to CrossFit, um, especially after I had my older daughter, you know, there was like the mom's CrossFit class. And I was like, Hey, these pull-up things are kind of fun. And, um, so started getting into it that way and then was coaching running and, uh, the lady that owned the running store was like, there's this warrior dash thing. And I was like, Oh, I'm a real runner. I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to do that. And she was like, no, no, do it. It'll be fun. I was like, ah, oh, fine. This is so lame. And then I went out and I was like, this is the most fun thing I have ever done. And we went as a big group. So there was a lot of like waiting around at obstacles and, and whatnot, but you know, it was just like ridiculous I just had a smile on my face was laughing the whole time and I was like I don't care if I consider myself to be a real runner or not this is what I want to be doing and uh, so I just kind of fell in that way right and, and just the constant challenge of it all I really like there's always something that you can be working on there's always something that you're new at and that you're not so good at um, so it's one of those it's like I don't know very many sports that are like this but it's one of those um you know, the things that you can dedicate your life to that things are constantly always going to challenge you and they're always changing and you are always going to have something to work at. Um, and not just like at the upper margins, right? Like sometimes like with running, you're like, oh, I'd really like to take four seconds off my 10K time. <laughs> it's like, you're eking away at little margins. But with OCR, it's like, man, if you can get like better lock off or if you can, you know, um, get strong can take significant chunks of time out just because there's so much involved right and that just kind of arcs back to the fact that there's so many components and so many skills and so many strengths involved that it really prepares you for almost anything that you want to do in life or have to do in life mm -hmm. absolutely um what are actually do you still have any residual effects in the arms at all as far as the hanging or anything like that does it impact you yeah, it's funny because I get that a lot. People are like, so when did you recover? <laughs> when were you done recovering? I'm like, I don't really know if I can like point to a time um, just because it's kind of constant, right? Like with my hip breaking, I just like one of my knees kind of ducks in and my foot kind of goes out. Um, and then, you know, with the arm, I can't, I have no feeling in the radial triangle at the end there, you know, like the pointer finger and the thumb kind of where they join. I can feel it. Like if something touches me, I know something touched me. I just don't know, um, you know, if it's an ice cube or if it's like a lit match, I can't tell the difference because it's just the feeling's bad. Um, and then I'm just, I'm not as strong grabbing with that hand, but even though I can't really feel stuff as good, I'm pretty surprised really at how my grip isn't that much worse. I remember when I started OCR, it was a big thing when I'd come into a ring, a rig, sorry, if there was a challenging hold, I'd have to place like my hands properly in terms of getting my good hand on the harder hold. And now less so, you know, it's not necessarily as strong, but I'm not as stressed out about it. Um, and it, it, it's surprising really how the body adapts. <laughs> it's, it's pretty amazing that way, right? You know, like back tightness and stuff, you just got to get on on it like anything else. And I think even though I have broken my back and, and that I have some like residual stuff and tightness in my back and I can, you know, feel it pinch if I move funny or whatever. The sudden probably has a lot more back pain than I do for sure. So I think it just comes down to, to keep staying moving. And, you know, we all have little tweaks and <laughs> niggles and quirks in our body and it's, it's really just about making the best of what you have and the body really responds to that and goes a long way, no matter what you have under the surface, you know, um, you can always make it better. So I think, you know, we all have that stuff, but just do your best to make it better. And uh, you'll be surprised at how well your body responds to that. Awesome. I'm curious. Cause um, you mentioned yourself, like the doctors didn't want you lifting over a certain amount because of your back and everything. What, and I know like, that a lot of people are told that by their physicians, what was it that made you decide like, it's okay to lift heavier, or at least I'm going to challenge myself. Um, was it someone that someone else that you talked to that told you that, or just kind of your mindset about like challenge the body? What, what was that like? Yeah, it's just, 
kind of, I think, how I was raised. I just don't, you know, like my my parents are are very typical, like Alberta <laughs> born people that are like just you know cowboy up kind of thing and, and just do what you can and uh, you always challenge yourself because that's what makes you stronger, right? So that's just kind of, I think, always been my mentality, um, just in terms of like doing what I can and what I know that I can. Um, I think, you know, it might also be just like, the form of stupidity that runs in my family. Like my brother ran a marathon with absolutely no training just because he thought that he could. And you know what? He did. But we're just kind of stubborn um, people that kind of, I, I think, maybe overestimate our ability sometimes. Um, but that's just kind of how we were raised to do things. Like if somebody else can do it, why can't you? Forget the fact that you broke your back or you've never run before. Of course you can run a marathon tomorrow, you know, like probably just a little crazy is what it comes down to. But, and it wasn't like I was like, okay, the doctor said I couldn't lift more than 10 pounds. So I'm going to go deadlift as much as I can. You know, it was a slow progression for sure. But I, I think I just never really, you know, I heard it, but I, I just never really took stock in it. I know one of them was like, oh, have you ever heard of ballroom dancing? Because I think ballroom dancing is where it's at for you. And I was like, I don't think that's where it's at for me. I want to go lift heavy things and run around. Um, and, uh, you know, you just get reinforced by like, Hey, this feels right. Like I, my body feels much better moving than it does sitting still. Like the worst I could do for my back, I swear to goodness, is just sit around, um, because it just gets tight and sore and just miserable. And all I can think of is how much my back hurts, but if I keep moving, I mean, it's really fine. I might have a little bit of tightness here or there, but, um, it's really the, I hate the, the cheesy line, but movement really is medicine. I mean, bodies are just meant to move. They are not meant to sit stagnant and they just will adapt to kind of whatever you throw at them as long as you introduce it intelligently, right? I mean, a lot of people are like, oh, no, 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 movement hurts my back. I've, you know, just been sitting around for three years and then I went. It to respond to what you introduce it to and if you do that in a smart way then it's just the way that bodies are meant to be and, and you'll experience so much less pain and you know that strength will carry over to everything that you do in life yeah absolutely <laughs> excuse me um I find it really funny that the whole ballroom dancing thing like why that versus like yoga or pilates or something else yeah no it's ballroom dancing and it went on and on and on and on and uh I was just like, I don't you seem really into I think he was probably a ballroom dancer but that was the thing right it's like okay you need to just give up on these like super intense sports and I'm like is it super intense though I mean like these are all like everything that you do in OCR people have been doing since the dawn of people right yeah um and there are, you know, certain things like Pilates and yoga and that really, um, you know, was instrumental in terms of teaching my body how to move better and like be more balanced and stuff. I think maybe without that foundation, um, I'd have struggled a bit more. But, you know, for me, those are like launch points. Like once you get the movement down and once you get all your your muscles like firing symmetrically and the right ones, um, you know, that's use that then to like do things that humans do in life right um and and I think you know like especially with the Pilates or whatever in terms of like learning how to activate your core and all that stuff I mean translate those movements then to things that you know you want to be doing and, and challenging movements it's fine that people like get into Pilates and they stay there for life but for me it really is just like the foundation of how you should be moving and then you know you move forward with that and those are your new patterns for every single time that you move your body. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I'm curious. Um, so obviously like, you are, you're a coach now you do a lot of like, that's where your focus is. How does, or does the, you know, the trauma that you went through the rehab process, the everything that you did to rebuild that base, rebuild where you're up, how did that all impact? Like how you function now as a coach, how you program and talk to people and, and all that? Well, it's kind of hard because, you know, I was never into fitness as a child. I was terribly slow and I, there's nothing that 
comes naturally to me in terms of body movement at all. Like I'm just clumsy and, um, you know, I'm not fast or any of that stuff. I'm not powerful. I'm not, you know, like a natural athletic person. And we all know those people. I'm somebody that came to it and, you know, really had to fight my way (laughs) into any sort of athleticism. It was just a lot of work. So, you know, I think even without the accident that I probably get it, you know, a lot of people see somebody that's done decently well in athletics or whatever. And uh, they think, oh, they must've been born like that. Like they, they came out of the room running and doing all this stuff. And my gosh, I couldn't do a pull up. I couldn't run five kilometers, like as an adult, as an early adult, it was only when I went back to school and college and I started to, you know, jog and stuff that I found that. So, you know, I think even without the accident, I just understand the process of getting fitter. And I understand the process of, like the proper progression from like zero to you know your best self so to speak but everybody kind of starts from wherever they start and that you kind of move slowly through those levels and i think sometimes if somebody is one of those natural athletes they may kind of miss some of those and like just the feeling of how hard everything is and how far off you seem from doing anything and that's actually why i love what I do is because those feelings are so recent for me, right? Like I, the thought of even like walking across the streets to me in 2006, after I got hit was like, unbelievable. Like, I'm like, someday I will walk across the street, you know, someday I will be able to do a pair of jeans up. Like those are things that are like pie in the sky, crazy goals for me at that point so like for even those little things to just seem so far away I see the same thing in my clients in terms of like you know man doing a pull-up that is so far off that is so far away and that's why it's worth doing right it's because now when you finally do that pull-up and if you do the work you will I've seen it a thousand times you know I've been there where I'm like there's no way I'm ever going to be able to do a pull-up and I'm like wow when did this happen that I could do like so many pull-ups and they just seem easy Um, But that process is just magical. And it's cool to be able to walk through that with people because, you know, I'm constantly on the hunt for more, um, more challenges that will make me feel that but to be able to feel that with my clients as they walk through that process of becoming that new person of doing things that they to their core don't think that they're capable of doing is just incredible. It's like nothing else like that is the secret to loving life is just to find things that are too hard for you to do that you don't think you'll ever be able to do and then to do them. That's awesome. Yeah. Do you tend, uh, actually I'm going to change, change question. I just remember something else I want to talk to you about. Um, I remember one thing that you mentioned when we were talking before, as far as through that recovery process was, um, and we kind of brushed on this a little bit was just breaking everything down into small little goals. So not looking, like you just said, for that walking across the street, but it's like, what's that next step of the process in order to get there? Um, and I think that's super important. And even like for getting a pull-up, like, you know, I think it's the same thing. It's um, when we have these big, what seems unreasonable goals in front of us at times, like, I think it does really help to break it into that. Like, well, what's that next step that I need to get to that final outcome? Oh my God. Yeah, absolutely. And not only that, like if you can't do pull-ups, you're not just going to be like, I'm just going to keep trying to do pull-ups until I can do pull-ups. I mean, that might work, but probably not. Right. Um, And then you miss the whole amazing journey part where you're like, I can't do a row. So there's like all these little wins along the way. Right. And so who wants to miss that? Right. So not only is that really the only way to like conceivably do something as hard as a freaking pull up, but it's like all those little celebrations along the way that keeps you motivated. Right. Like every time you do that, that's a little hit of dopamine. Right. That's a little like um, chisel in that crafting of this person that you want to be. So like it's just that's what keeps you going. It's just these little micro goals. It's just really the only way, right? And it's um, it's just all part of that 
marvelous journey and it drives me crazy when people don't celebrate that and they're like oh i'm gonna do like obstacle racing so i'm just gonna go and do the world's toughest matter i'm just gonna skip everything and i'm like no don't skip everything like you know and don't like your first race don't go out there and be like i want to win or i don't even care and it's like whatever the whole experience sucks and it's like no 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 no. like you have to like enjoy the first one just because it's the first one right and then the next time it's like you need to pick another goal and enjoy that but if you just go right to the top then it's like oh why would you do that even if you could because then you missed everything along the way and that's that everything is where life is right that's that's the part that makes it worth living that's the part that makes it worth doing right is just having that thing that seems so hard and so unachievable and going after it and getting it and and that's in training that's in racing that's just you know, overarching everything. And you just don't want to miss that, not for anything. And I think it's so hard. Like it's something I've struggled with for years and I'm getting better at now. And that is so celebrating those small wins. Cause so many times, like, and it's something I've started journaling on too. Like every night now I write down, like, what is my win for the day? Um, just because every day we do have wins, it's just, they're small little and we don't realize it. And then all of a sudden the end of the year comes and it's like, oh my gosh, like I accomplished a lot this year. And so I think it's really well, but you didn't get to celebrate it. Out. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't notice. Yeah, exactly. That's such a smart thing to do in terms of just like writing it down and recording it. Cause then it gives you that reflection, right? And then you see those numbers because you're you're like sitting there writing them down. And so even if it's just whatever I did, uh, 10 squats at 100 pounds yesterday, and now I did 10 squats at, you know, 105 pounds, maybe you won't notice that like small differences. But you do when you write them down, right? And it just gives you that reflection time. So that's a really good process. Yeah, absolutely. Anything else that we haven't talked about today that just with whether it's your coaching or, you know, the, your experiences that you've been through that you feel would be really important to bring up and talk about today? Man, yeah, um, I don't think so. I think that was just about it. Yeah. I don't know. It's just it's like really one of those things that I miss being a beginner in OCR, right? And I, I love the fact that I was around for the time I was around and it was the beginning and everything. But, you know, I think people just forget to just savor every second of being a beginner in a sport um, and how special and how magical that is. Because by the time you've done it enough, you're never going to get those days back, right? It's like having little kids or anything that it's just real easy to get too wound up in everything and just miss all of those like little moments and those little celebrations and uh, just being new at something and having a new experience. Right. Um, so yeah, I just, you know, I always try to recommend to people that they really savor every second of that. Cause it, that is really where it's at. Beautiful. <laughs> well, if someone wants to talk to you, if they have questions for you, if they just want to follow your journey, where can they find you? Um, you can find me at Facebook, Allison Tai. I don't think there's any more of me. So A L L I S O N T A I. Um, you know, I have a website, AllisonTai.ca. I think is the easiest one. Um, and then I am on Instagram. I think it's Grit Farm Fitness, which is my farm here. Um, and then it's there are periods between them. Uh, so Grit Farm Fitness. I'm really bad at Instagram messages though. So <laughs> send me one of those. Send me one on Facebook. Uh, definitely showing my age. Uh, but yeah, any of those, like, reach out. I, there's not too many Allison ties. So I think even if you Googled it, I'll come up somewhere. <laughs> awesome. Sounds good. <laughs> well, Aslan, thank you so much for your time today. It's really great talking with you and hearing more about your story. Yeah, you too. Thanks for the time. This is great. <laughs>